So in this episode, we're going to look at modifiers. And to show us where we left off last time, we had an arrow ability. And when it hit the hero, it destroyed itself. And it would also fly off into the distance and end as well. And it also gave us vision and all those other good stuff. But what you might notice, it doesn't stun the enemy. And we want to stun them. And that's what we're really doing this episode. And if we look at Morana's arrow, the default, when it hits Sven, there's a debuff indicator that comes up over his head showing that he's stunned. And also there's a thing in the bottom of the heads up display that shows that he's stunned and the duration that he is being stunned when we ping it. Now with Marana, she also has other stuff like her own buffs like leap charges uh, and these are all stuff that are called buffs and debuffs as a player in Dota but in the custom game tools these are called modifiers and we're going to look at them in the documentation. So this is the documentation on the wiki, there will be a link down in the description for this. So here is an example of creating the class for our modifier. So let's go and create this class or this file. So if we go into your project folder and you go to scripts, vscripts, and in the same folder where our ability is, we're gonna go and create a new file called test modifier. So this is our modifier that we can call anything we want, but we're just calling it test modifier. Now we're gonna open this up in our text editor and we're gonna go call this class called test modifier equals class and that's our modifier creation now our modifier doesn't do anything yet and also our ability doesn't know anything about it so if we go back to our ability here my arrow dot lua we can link we need to link this modifier to this ability so the ability can use this modifier and it doesn't know where it is so in the documentation here there's a line of code saying link lua modifier and we put this here now we need to change this to test modifier because that's the name of our file and link lua modifier is a function you can find this on the api and this is a constant that's been passed in i think this is just a default value there's a couple of other ones but i don't think they're really that important so now that our ability knows about this modifier, we need to apply it to the enemy that we're hitting when we our arrow goes through. So if we go down to this function on projectile hit, previously we had to check to see if we were hitting a target. And if the target is not nil, we want to apply a modifier onto it. In this case, our test modifier. So in the API, there is an example of, or no, there isn't an example, but there's a function called add new modifier, which is part of base NPC. So our target inherits that. So we can go like this, right? So this is what you do, add new modifier. And what we're passing into this function is the caster is in the first position. We have the source ability, modifier name, and then modifier data. So we need the caster, which is going to be self get caster. And then we're going to go into self, which is disability. And our modifier is called modify or test modifier. And then we have a table and you can leave this blank if you want, if you're just applying a modifier once and all you wanted to do is create and then get destroyed instantly after. But luckily for us, we want to set the duration of this. Let's say we want the stun to happen a certain amount of time. In this table, we can set uh, this to five seconds. So our stun will la our debuff will last five seconds when we hit the enemy. So let's run this and see what ends up happening. So now let's level up our ability. And we had this NPC we spawned last time and we hit him. And the arrow gets destroyed, but there's nothing happening. And if we look at the here on the tooltip, you can see that he actually has this uh, buff here on him. I can't ping it for some reason, but you see that the buff is being applied to him. Now, there's nothing so interesting about this, and uh, we need to add extra functionality and logic to what we're doing right now. And this uh, will last five seconds. We can pass in other values in here, but they're not so important. And we can change this value. If we want, we can get this value from our special values that we were doing last episode. 
but what we're going to look at is some examples that Valve have already put together for us. So if we go back here to Dota add-ons and we look at the different projects that are here. Now, this is the previous folder. This is your project folder. And if you go back one directory, you'll get to here and see all the examples that Valve have already made for you. So there's one called Lua Ability Example. You wanna click on that. I would recommend don't modify any of the files in here. And if you do, if you do wanna modify them, make a separate custom game that, uh, what you call it, like uh, you can add an, you can create an add-on from a template and this is the template that you should use so if we go into scripts v scripts and in here is examples of all of the abilities for a few different heroes we have nature's prophet which is furion lena uh we have pudge sven vengeful spirit yeah so that's four or five heroes there and that's a really good example of nearly all of the different types of abilities that can happen within dota and good examples here so what we care about is looking at a stun like um, Sven's stun or Vengeful Spirit stun. So Venge has one called Magic Missile here. And what we care about is these files are located with Vengeful Spirit Magic Missile Lua. That's the spell class, but there's ones with the modifier name. So modifier Magic Missile. What's the rest of this file called? So we want this one, the modifier vengeful spirit magic missile.lua. So let's open this up and have a look at the code that Valve has put here. So here are a few different functions and they're doing various different things and there's a, a good few of them. But what's really important here is the one that's called check state. And what it has is a table that pushes in this constant modifier state stunned equals true and it returns this state. You can put in other modifiers here that are also documented in the constants in the API. So if you type in modifier state into the API, let's and look for a search this. So you get all of these different ones down along here. So you have like invisible, hexed, uh, muted, silenced, and all of these are interactions in Dota itself. And you can set any of these effects to be happening. So if you don't want it to be stunned, you can change this to muted or whatever the name of the constant is. If you wanted to do another one, you could do muted and stunned, uh, which would be kind of overpowered, but you can do that that way too. But what we're gonna do is just copy this vengeful spirit thing into our project. Uh, we'll reset this back to the same. So previously where we had test modifier, we're gonna copy and paste this in here and we're gonna rename the class to uh, test modifier. So everywhere we're using this class, we're gonna reset this back. Okay, let's do this each time. Change this one, every single one. So what we're gonna look at is the properties so in lua there or sorry in the modifiers there's a few different things that you can set uh, which are properties and this is how within dota it understands what this modifier is doing so these are kind of like getter functions for people who know what they are but if you want to set it to be a debuff you can return true and these are functions that require a boolean so let's look at the api there's a few of these right so i think it's a modifier lua here we go. So this is on the API here. We go C Dota modifier Lua. And in here, there's a bunch of functions that are like is debuff and it's returning a bool. So everyone that returns a bool is pretty much like a property that's getting you can return true or false. And there's a description beside what each one does. Now the ones that are in red mean that uh, they're what, what would you call it? They're, they don't exist anymore or they don't have any functionality. They're deprecated. So you don't, I don't think your custom game will stop functioning, but what happens is they'll have like no impact. So you can ignore what's in red on the API. So we also care about uh, this other thing, stun debuff. You can set that to true and get effect name this is the particle effect that's going to be assigned it's a very very small particle effect that's like a spinning uh, circle that appears above your hero you might not be able to see it when we're looking at the example 
and then it attaches that particle effect over the head which is this is the constant for the attach type and then we're looking at declare functions and we'll go into this in a little bit uh, which is declaring functions but what we want to do is look at this as an example so we did this code we're adding a new modifier that lasts five seconds and this time we've updated our test modifier to copy what the vengeful spirit stun is doing enemy here he's gonna attack us now is he okay he's attacking and we throw the arrow and he's stunned but unfortunately this unit does not have a stunned animation so what we need to do is spawn an enemy and we're going to go create hero Sven and make sure we put enemy after it as a cheat and we'll spawn Sven into the game. Now when we throw an arrow at him and it hits him you'll see the stun indicator comes above his head. There's this like circle thing particle effect that appears above his head and you can change those to other particle effects and we'll look at different particle effects in the future but episodes but for now this is how you pretty much stun the enemy. Now, one of the other things that we want to go back here is modifier functions. And modifier functions, you have to declare them. So this is pretty much listening into these events, or, or not events, but they're like uh, different functions that can call that the modifier will look at. So in this case, we have a bunch of these modifier property override animation. And this is the function that we're listening into. This is the constant and this is the function. Now to get the understand what all of these are, uh, there's on the documentation, if we scroll down here and on this page again, which is Lua abilities and modifiers in the documentation, there's a, a value for, this is the value and this is the function on the right hand side. So if we use this constant instead, modifier event on ability in channel, then it's going to call this on ability in channel. And you can do different things that will listen into Yeah, They're pretty much events, I guess. That's what they end up being. So we're listening into, what is it called? Uh, this one here called, let's have a look, see what this is. So this gets get override animation. So I assume what this is doing is overriding what our animation is. It doesn't explain really. Forces, oh yeah, here it is in the doc API. So it says get forces a parent to play a specific animation. So as a matter of fact, these constants are in the API too. And if we go to modifier function down here in the API, and we see what each one of these does. So modifier property invisibility level uh, generates a level of opacity for the parent. So you can make them uh, like appear invisible. And some of these modifiers might only have like a visual effect rather than having, or see, these modifier functions probably do something like a visual effect or something along the lines of that. There's probably a few different ones here that are doing stuff. Okay, here is like attack speed bonus constant. There's a stuff that you can do with stats as well. And there's a bunch of different modifications that you can add to your unit. Now we've only looked at this one and we don't really care about any more. So that's the basic of modifiers. And I would heavily recommend use the examples that Valve have given as a template for your next modifier or any sort of modifier that's there. There's also events, which I never really covered in this, but you can do like on create and on destroy and listen into those events. And also this table will, like before we were passing in duration here and this table uh, to our modifier, you can pass in extra values as well. And those values can be accessible to the arguments of the KV value. And if we just have a look very quickly here at nature's profit, his teleportation file. So he's has a function here called, let's see, we have add new modifier. So this is our mo modifier and he's passing in a table called KV on this line. So this is adding the modifier Furion and this table is here and it's passing in an X, Y, and Z position. So this is uh, kind of to do with the teleportation, as you might guess. So if we look then at his modifier, it's called modifier fury on teleportation. And in here in the on created, this is the name of the event function. 
the kv values are passing here this function and as you see that it's saying that the end position is going to this xyz position that he passed through as well so i hope you enjoyed this if you want to see more dota 2 custom game tutorials make sure you subscribe so one thing i forgot to mention was that in these event functions on created and on destroyed you need to ensure that only this has been executed on the server and how you do that is you call this function called is server and this will return true or false if it's the server or the client and this ensures that the stuff doesn't go out of sync or some other problem so it's only happening on the server and all of your code within here should be encased within the is server 